Hi there dear guys and girls, I'm Petra. Today I wanted to make a new video on uh, the narcissistic friendship. And you know, if you are in a friendship that causes you to become a detective on the internet looking for answers to a strange and unexplicable behavior, then you need to know that you need to distance yourself from that friendship. Because if you are looking for answers, then something is wrong. That is your gut feeling that you are following. And that is why you are looking for the answers. So distance yourself. Distance yourself from these friendships. They do not add value to your life. They do not add value to your sense of well-being, to your happiness, to your joy. They just take from it all the time. So I know that it is a lot easier, at least that is my experience, um, and I have been through several uh, narcissistic friendships. It is a lot easier to break away from a friendship than it is to break away from a toxic relationship. So, you know, um, see that as uh, something uh, that you can use to your benefit. Is that you, it is easier to break away. It's not less painful, but it is easier to break away and um, you recover um, a lot quicker in my experience. That doesn't have to mean that is the same in your experience. So when we look at the narcissistic friendship, um, you know, at some point you do get the lesson. As I just mentioned, I went through uh, narcissistic friendships uh, several times. And at some point, it was, I think, friendship number three, um, you start to realize that there are a lot of patterns that are the same that you notice in a friendship years ago, that you notice in a friendship that followed that. So I started noticing a pattern and I also started noticing the pattern of behavior that I was displaying in these friendships, which was not um, healthy. It was not contributing to, uh, to the friendship. So to the narcissistic friend, you are nothing more than an object and um, you provide him or her with uh, things that they need during their friendship there you know you fulfill certain desires and certain wishes that they may have in in the friendship and and that could look anything like um, admiration uh, money support um, submissive behavior that was a big one for me that I was very submissive in these friendships and when I got tired of being submissive and I would speak out and I would voice my opinion and I would disagree with them that is when their ugly side would come up so that again is a huge red flag when you see that happening you know you have to run or at least distance yourself um, so yes the, the compliments the money you know it could be a friend who is continuously borrowing money from you um, who um, suggests in such a way um, you could be out somewhere, out for a meal, out, um, you know, a day out and you find yourself always paying for stuff and um, it is very often uh, or not often given back to you. So that is something that is, it, that's just not right. You know, in a friendship it's give and take. Any friendship, it's a give and take situation. But when you find yourself giving by, uh, you know, through your own resources, through money, through time, through energy, and feeling depleted after that, that is when you know it is toxic. So when we meet up with these narcissistic friends, you know, in the beginning, of course, you will think, wow, I've, uh, I really, I really have a connection with this person. And you will also find that they have very many emotional needs that need to be met. And oftentimes, we um, mistake these emotional needs for transparency and vulnerability. And these emotional needs show up through the toxic friend um, by uh, playing the victim or playing someone uh, who wants to save you, the savior. Um, and we mistake this for, for vulnerability. We mistake this for transparency as well. You think, goodness, they open up their heart space and they share so many um, emotional things with me. Uh, this has got to be someone from, you know, I've, I've won the jackpot. 
but that is not the way um, it really is. That is not reality. So what they will do is that they will take advantage of your misunderstanding of their emotional needs. So again, you will think it is transparency, transparency, you will think it's vulnerability, but these are just the tactics that they use to lure you into the friendship. Um, so yeah, you will see a lot of victim playing and you will see on the other side of the coin, the flip side of the coin, is that they will try and save you. So it's usually when you are going through a crisis in your life, you're going through some, you know, some rough times and you need someone to listen to you, you need uh, guidance in certain things, you will think that they are great listeners, but what they are really doing is gathering personal information from you so that they can throw this back in your face at a later date. That is what it is all about. And this is what they will also use when they are going through the smear campaign. They will use your personal information, your personal crisis situations to throw back in your face, to tell everyone about. So just be warned, you know, I think that was, that was a great uh, warning for me as well. They got to the point in these narcissistic friendships that I went through where I, 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 I got to the point where I thought, hmm, I'm not going to share that information. There were certain bits of information that I thought, no, it is not safe. I couldn't explain it. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that certain bits of information I had to keep to myself because, you know, again, that, that is the instinct. That is your intuition telling you, do not share this personal information with them because it is going to be used against you. So that's another red flag. When you feel that, when you feel that in your gut, then you again know that you are in a toxic situation. Um, the, the narcissistic friend will manipulate you into believing that you have a sincere bond, a sincere soul connection. This is what they will use to again lure you into the friendship um, but nothing is further from the truth because as we all know narcissists live in their own little fantasy world and they deem themselves the king or the queen in this fantasy world it all revolves around them so you are really of no importance to them you are just there to provide them with narcissistic supply and again, you know, you will, you will be on to this when you realize that you are doing more listening and they are not listening to you, when you are forking out more of your time, energy, money, and it is not being reciprocated. Um, you are always there for them in their crisis, but when the tables are turned, they tend to shy away from the situation or they will give you some form of comfort but you will feel that it is not, um, it is not given with their all. It is, it is, it is a play that they put on. It's, it's really acting that they put on. Um, so th that, that is another way that you can tell that the friendship is not uh, a two way street. You will feel that you are not really being understood, that you are not really being heard, that they rather turn the conversation around and speak about themselves again. So this is, you know, this is the whole thing. When there's drama involved, and it's usually when there's drama on the side of the narcissistic friend, that they will they will be all up in your face, telling you about their drama, telling you about the crisis that they are going through. And um, when the tables are turned, they will just be nowhere, nowhere to be found, or will or will shut the conversation down. This happened to me so very often is that the conversation is just shut down completely when you are trying to share um, crisis situations with them. Um, the narcissistic friend has no true understanding of the value of friendship. Now, you will think they do um, by the way they act, by the way they communicate with you, but this is usually in the beginning stages of the friendship but they do not have a real understanding of friendship. Because again, 
A friendship is all about giving and taking. It is a two-way street. Um, when your friend falls, you fall with them and you help them up. Uh, when a friend needs support, you give that support and you will find that in a healthy friendship, that support will be given back to you. There will no be, there, there will be no um, um, balance, you know, when, when, when the narcissistic friend says to you, yes, but I did this and this and that for you and you only did one or two things. When they are looking for the balance in that, that is another red flag. There is no balance in, or there, you don't need to make up the balance in a healthy friendship. It will just be a natural thing that you support your friend and that your friend supports you. So another red flag. I don't know how many I've, I've mentioned up until now, but these are all the little red flags that you need to look out for. Um, another thing that you will find comes into play at some point, which I also noticed in all the, the narcissistic friendships that I went through, is that um, there is a lot of envy involved. And whether the envy is about your looks, about what you have accomplished, about a certain course or training that you followed, whether it is about uh, having a new relationship, whether it is about being a great parent, being a great friend to someone else outside of the, the narcissistic friendship. It doesn't really matter what it is, but you will find that there is a lot of envy involved at some point. And envy is actually a, a, a rage reaction for not being able to control you or control what you have going in your life. So the things that are going well. This is a narcissist way of showing you their rage when they are extremely envious or jealous of, um, of what you have accomplished or of what or, or of the type of person that you are. So if they see that you are very successful in other friendships and that you also like hanging out, excuse me, excuse me, also like hanging out with these other friends, um, you will see the, en uh, the envy level go right up there. This is something that they do not like. They will try to also isolate you from other friends because they want you all to themselves so that they can control and manipulate you. This is just not right because again in a healthy friendship you are you do not get the feeling that you have to um, hand in your freedom you just feel very free in a healthy uh, friendship so when you feel that that tabs are being kept on you um, <coughs> excuse me that um, they are trying to control you that they want to know your every move who are you with where are you hanging out um, um, get angry if you don't pick up your phone fast enough or answer the message fast enough. Um, these are all telltale signs. They will become extremely angry or you will be given the silent treatment. Um, there is also a lot of resentment going on. You know, they resent the fact that you are well balanced, that you are healthy, that you have a sense of self, especially which is something that I myself uh, noticed in all these narcissistic friendships, that I did have a sense of self. It was clouded by um, certain childhood issues that I was going, you know, that I still hadn't healed at that point. But I did have a very strong sense of self. And you will notice that this is something that a narcissist does not know how to handle in, in a friendship because they themselves do not have a sense of self. They themselves are empty. And when they see that you are doing well for yourself and that you are standing firm in your truth, this is something that is going to send them into uh, silence or into rage. So these are just a few uh, pointers that you, know, that, that you can be aware of when you are not too sure of um of where you stand in these in these friendships and you know it, it, it can be a lot um it can be a, a lot more difficult when you are in friendship with a narcissist that you are not too sure you know you're not too sure what's going on you just know that this friendship is very different from your other friendships that is something that that you will notice and if you are on good terms, if you have healthy friendships outside of the narcissistic friendship, 
then you will find that you'll be warned by your other friends, you'll be warned by other, by family members even, um, and they'll say, you know, there, there's something up with that person, there's something up with, with the guy or the girl, um, maybe you should distance yourself a bit. I know this was often said to me, and uh, I chose to ignore it, I didn't want to see it, but they were absolutely right, all these, the, the healthy friends in my life, they were right. So listen to those around you. They are, you know, those around you who truly love you and who warn you in a gentle fashion. They have your best interests at heart. So uh, do listen to them. And again, when you find yourself looking for uh, answers on the internet, looking at YouTube videos, which is something that I did when I started to uh, sense that something was wrong, in these friendships, I started looking for for, for answers on, on on internet, on YouTube, um, and that you know that in itself is a red flag. It's just showing you that uh, you realize that something is not congruent with who you authentically are, and that is why you're looking for these answers. So again, um, when you realize that you are in a toxic friendship, doesn't they don't have to be a narcissist, but if the friendship is toxic you will know, follow that gut feeling and take every step necessary to distance yourself from these kinds of, of friendships because they do not, they do not add value to your life at all. I think the only uh, good thing about a toxic friendship is that when you leave that friendship and you look back, um, you review it for yourself, that's when you realize where the wounds that you're still carrying around with you um, need to be addressed and need to be um, um, healed which is again speaking from a personal experience my wound was that I would just be so willing to be nice all of the time and uh, to please the other person I was a terrible people pleaser and I did not have uh, strong boundaries if anything I had very weak boundaries and in certain situations I had no boundaries at all so this is what I took away from all these narcissistic friendships is that I needed to set firm and healthy boundaries. I needed to say no more often and I needed to stop people pleasing. You know, there's a difference between people pleasing and being kind. But the real issue is that you need to turn that around and be kind to yourself, be loving towards yourself and look for the healthy friendships and nurture those healthy friendships, but leave the toxic friendships alone. They do not add value. So I hope um, that answered some of your questions because I've been getting a lot of questions from you through the email, um, requesting that I make some more videos on, on narcissistic friendships. I did make a lot of them um, in the early stages of, of the YouTube channel, but um, I uh, tended to uh, keep it very general the last couple of weeks. So thank you for your request and I will definitely make some more on the toxic friendships. Thanks all again for watching and uh, have a great Sunday wherever you are in the world. Take care of yourself and uh, keep yourself safe. Bye for now.